Greetings and salutations, I'm Zook, your lovable storyteller, bringing you a Geeks Anonymous tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to import custom miniatures into Tabletop Simulator. I'd like to give a big shout out to Desktop Hero 3D. I have contacted them and they gave me express permission to use their uh, miniatures in my Tabletop Simulator games and my games moving forward on my channel. You can catch those videos on twitch.tv slash geeksanonymous. Keep up to date on when we stream. Follow us on Twitter at geeksanonymous. And without further ado, we'll get right into this. So as you see here, I'm on Desktop Hero 3 d And you'll see that I've already made my miniature. And now we're going to save the file, download it as you normally would. At this point, you, if you have a 3D printer, you could definitely 3D print it, no problem, load it into a slicer and you're good to go. However, with Tabletop Simulator, you can't just load an STL. Not only can you not import an STL, it has to be an OBJ. So what you're going to need to do is convert it to an OBJ using Blender, but there are a few more steps that are uh, necessary in order to have it in Tabletop Simulators. So first things first, we're going to go to Blender. You can get the free version of Blender. They just came out with a new update, 2.82.7. Um, highly recommend you fully updating it. Hopefully this tutorial will stay up to date. So when you load Blender, you'll see this. Um, first things first, we're just going to not worry about that. Um, there are plenty of instances where you would use such a thing. This is not one of them. We're going to go to File. We're going to go to Import and down to STL. So then we will go find the downloads folder is usually where it defaults. And character.stl. And as you can see, it is huge. Um, you do not want it this big. It is crazy big. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, resize it. So this box on the right hand column called object prior uh, properties, we're going to Bring that right down. I usually bring it right down to about 0.15, that on all the dimensions. And then you can shift middle mouse button to move the canvas and scroll in. All right, now, as you can see, it is now a decent size to work with. Now, we, we really don't have to worry about sculpting or doing anything fancy. We don't have to worry about skeleton bones and all that 3D modeling stuff. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go to add modifier. So the reason we're going here, if you look down at the at the bottom, right where it says faces, there are 789,000 faces. So this file will not import into uh, Tabletop Simulator because it has too many faces and it exceeds the limitations of what um, Tabletop Simulator can do. So we need to lower the resolution. Unfortunately, it will not be as pretty as this, but you, you kind of have to do a middle ground if you're going to be doing this. So we're going to go to Add Modifier, which, like I said, is this button right here, Modifier Properties. It's the uh, blue wrench. Go to Add Modifier. You'll see the Generate column. We're going to go down to Decimate. Now you'll see the ratio bar is at one, uh, is at a value of one. So what we're going to do, you can click right in there, and I usually bring it down to about either 25%. Sometimes works for some models, but this one I actually don't think it's going to be enough because the face out is so high with the extra wings and all the extra things that I've gone to. Yeah, see, it's only uh, it, it's still at. 197,000 faces. So a face is basically how many like triangles, little tiny triangles there are throughout the model that make up the actual uh, model itself. So we actually want to aim for about uh, like 50,000 or less. So it's it, like I said, it's going to lose quality, but this is the only way to actually that I have found anyways of importing it into Tabletop Simulator. So I'm going to bring it down to a 0 0.08 and see what that gets me at. All right, so it's brought it to 63,000. That's still a little high, but we're going to see if we can manage it. And as you can see, it actually it doesn't look horrible. You can see it is it is a lot more pixelated than it was before, but I think 
that it might be enough to actually do it. So now we're going to go to File, and we're going to export it. But this time, instead of STL, we're going to go to OBJ. So, J, and I usually save it right to the dust desktop to make it nice and easy to find. And we're going to name it Angel Dude, and export. All right, and now we're going to go into Tabletop Simulator. As you can see here, I've already uploaded this model before. So I'm going to go over here. We'll go to Objects. Then we'll go to Components. And you'll see the Custom right here. Click on that, and you'll see Model. We're going to have this, and we're going to drag it right where you want it to drop. So then we'll go to Browse Local Files. Then go to Desktop, AngelDude.obj, Select. Cloud. Wanted to go to cloud because otherwise your other people, uh, if they join your game, will not be able to see it. Upload it. I usually like to select figurine. Um, this will allow us to uh, basically, whenever it, if it gets knocked over or whatever, if you pick it up, it'll automatically readjust it so it's standing up. So now I'm going to go to import. And it'll take a couple seconds. Oh, and you see, I just got this error. This, this, it's actually good that you see this, so you don't go, oh my god, I did it wrong. So this essentially means it's still too high of a face count for it to actually import. So we're going to go to back to Blender, and that's why I usually like to keep Blender open while I'm doing this, so I can make adjustments if I need to. So 0 0.08 was not enough. Uh, we're still at a 63,000. Like I said, you want to shoot for about 50,000. I don't know what the exact face count limitation is on Tabletop Simulator, but let's shoot for 50,000 and see what happens. So I'm going to go to 0 0.07 and see what that gets me. Okay, so this got me to 55,245. Um, we'll, that's still pushing it a little bit, but I'm going to see if it works. So let's go to export again. OBJ. I'm just going to overwrite the old one. Okay, back to Tabletop Simulator. You can just keep that open and re upload the Angel Dude. Cloud, upload, and wait for this to finish loading and import and see if that does it. And there we go. All right. So we have the angel. Now, as you can see here, it's still a little bit big. So you could either resize, go back into Blender, resize it there, um, or you can just do it right from Tabletop Simulator by pressing the um, by pressing the subtract key. Um, or what you also can do is go to the gizmo and go to the scale, and this will actually let you go further than the um, plus and minuses will allow you to do. So I usually like to go right about 0.17 and see how that looks. So it's a little smaller than I want it to be. So 0.25, let's see how that is. All right. There we go. All right. So there we go. We have our angel dude. Now, um, you may have saw when I loaded in, it actually hit this Jerboa monk that I had uploaded, um, even though it wasn't near the rim. So the reason for this is that the collider, the collider is currently set up, so there is an invisible box around the farthest regions of the entire model. So that means the height will be as high as the highest point on the wings, the width will be as high as the farthest point on the sword. So we're going to want to add a collider in this case. Some models you don't need to, they'll be self-contained inside of the um, actual platform. This is not one of those cases. So let's go back into Blender, and we've got our guy right here. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add, and I usually like to do a cylinder for this. So add, mesh, cylinder. And as you'll see right here, it spawns it right here. So if we did this, that would actually make the bottom um, of the hitbox way down here, which would cause, essentially cause our uh, guy to fly. 
Uh, we don't really want to do that. We want it to stay on the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to move, which is on the left hand side, and we're going to drag it up. So I like to get a full uh, face on view. So if you look at the top right here, uh, you'll see the Y. And if you click that, it will bring you to the true Y axis. So we're going to drag that right up to about there. Okay. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to transform this box. So what we could do, since we have that highlighted, I'm going to press S, which stands for scale. And we're just going to bring it right up here. And I like to keep it a little within the base, so I have a little bit of leeway. So I think right here is going to be good. And now I'm going to manually adjust the height, which is the which is the z-axis right here. And uh, I think uh, maybe a 2.5 will be pretty good for that. So now, as you'll see, that the uh, the cylinder went below the model again. So easy fix. Hit Y to make sure you're lined up right, and drag it. All right, you want that as flush as uh, as flush as you can. That way, the base doesn't flow or sink into the tabletop simulator. So now. I recommend that you have saved your uh, Blender project before you have done this step. So, because right now we're actually going to delete the miniature and we're going to File, Export, Just the Cylinder. And we're going to name this Angel Dude underscore Collision and Export. Let's go back into Tabletop Simulator. So uh, it, you can just re-upload it at this point, but what I like to do is just go to right-click, go to Custom, and I'm going to redo the Angel Dude. Go to Cloud, that way the, uh, the, the collision sinks back up to its original size. And we'll go to Upload, go to Collider, and then Angel Dude underscore Collision. That's the file we just made and select cloud upload and the rest of the properties is fine now if you don't want the shiny coat you can also go to material and you can choose whatever material you want it to look at you'll see these ones are more of a matte finish those are uh wood finish i personally like a little bit of gloss so i keep it on, on uh, plastic you can experiment with this all right and then we'll just go to import and as you see, it doesn't look like anything happened, but it did. So we're going to put the Jerboa Monk right next to him and take snap off so I can display this better. And it does no lo it no longer hits it. In fact, I can bring it a little closer into the thing before it actually disrupts it and hits it. And that's pretty much it. Um, so I hope you found this useful. Um, you know, I look forward to your uh, watching your games on Twitch or, you know, if you're going to do it in private, do it that way. Um, it is to be noted that several of the custom miniature sites have terms and agreements. So always check with uh, the company to see if you have permission to actually do this. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, Desktop Hero did give me express permission to uh, import this and stream it on my Twitch channel. Um, however, it should be noted that Hero Forge explicitly stated no when I asked them. It is in the terms and agreements that it is not allowed. Um, however, there is another company called Age, uh, Anvil .co, uh, which also allows people to do this as well. They gave me permission for that uh, as well. If you're just doing this for a personal use, you should be fine. But with all that, um, that's pretty much it, and I hope this was useful for you. Uh, definitely took me uh, a lot of Google food in order to find all this information out. But uh, until next time, we'll see you later. Toodaloo.